I've had this quite a few times now, along with the others that were released in the Imperial series. And I have to say that um, their Imperial series is nice as a push away from their uh, more commonly available varieties. I really did enjoy the difference. Uh, that said, I think that um, when I'm looking for a good Imperial White or, uh, more importantly, uh, a Trappist style, I'm probably going to stick to a Trappist style. I'm going to go for something like St. Bernard Bernardus or um, one of the six Trappists. Um, I think that it was a nice experiment. I, I would be surprised if we see this again next year. I think maybe they'll move on to other styles or maybe even dissolve the Imperial series altogether. Uh, that is not to say that this is not good. And we'll talk about the good things about it. Um, I just think that it maybe misses the mark somewhat. So, that being said, let's take a look at the uh, whole bottle shot. Because, of course, I like to use video as a basis for my photography. Uh, this is a 10.5% or 10.3% ABV in a 12 fluid ounce bottle. That tells me, for example, that I can expect it to be around 300 calories. Again, I haven't studied uh, Bob Skolnick's book, uh, Does This Beer Make My Butt Look Big? Uh, but apparently he's done a lot of research on calories, and I think Sam Adams actually makes their calories available. I, I haven't actually found their Imperial series listed anywhere, but that's not to say that that information is not available, like many others. Speaking of St. Bernardus, here is one of my favorite Trappist glasses in my glassware collection. Sometime I'm going to have to spend some time um, and here's actually my beloved Sam Adams bottle opener that I got while I was in Orlando the one time in my life. Let's listen to the crack. Nice fresh brew. Not too much of a rush. Let's put some light in the background there so that we can watch this pour. Fairly clear pour. It's a deep golden body. A little bit dark for a wit, certainly. Usually I expect something a little bit more golden. Uh, but this being an imperial wit, I can understand why they go a little bit darker. And I can already smell the uh, sort of cloves and other effects. Let's see if we can actually get some light behind it. See, it's very nice. Very nice color. Very nice carbonation. Beautiful head. Let's see if we can get this. it somehow. That's very nice. Pretty. <clears throat> Beautiful head. It seems almost designed, this head. It, I mean, it'll hang on for the next six or ten minutes if this brew uh, lasts for six or ten minutes. And that's, that's part of it, is there, there seems to be a sort of a chemical aftertaste on a lot of these Imperial Series brews, and I'm 
not sure why it's there other than maybe to help the appearance or something. But um, it's disruptive as far as I'm concerned to the flavor. And uh, this particular brew is something that I uh, invited my friend Suzanne to try too. So I'll be interested to see what she has to say about this brew. Um, hopefully my review won't influence her too much um, because she's tasting it with a relatively new palate for this kind of beer. And um, I think she'll be surprised, hopefully pleasantly surprised. Anyway. Lots of clothes. You can probably hear me sniffling. Excuse me for just a second. Just getting over a little bit of a cold, so forgive me for all the sniffles. Lots of candy. Definitely uh, cloves, spices, sweetness. Cinnamon, syrup, taffy. It's it's definitely sweetness in the aroma. There's some like bay leaf or something else. Uh, cardamom. Curry. I can imagine that the scent would uh, offset a really nice Indian dinner as... Uh, Many of the beers that I really enjoy would. Delicious. Delicious scent. Let's give it a taste. That is an intense flavor. It's, it's not especially well balanced. I think it's overly sweet. Almost cloying. I would say... Uh, it has a nice impression. I would say that there is some um, bread, definitely a lot of sweetness, sugary sweetness, not a lot of toast or nuts. Some caramel comes in, creeps in. Um, a little bit of chocolate on the end, especially as the palate sort of calms down from the sweetness. Uh, I would say there's a lot of earthiness in there, a lot of dirt flavor. A lot of herbs, I would say some coriander, heavy spice effects, lots of citrus, lots of orange rind, lots of lemon, a lot of lemon, I mean very tea oriented. Uh, as far as fruit, uh, other fruits, I would say there's some apple in there, some peach, but I get the sense it's almost like uh, the difference between 100% natural fruit juice and something that's artificially flavored. It, it really tastes artificially flavored, and that, that kind of bothers me. I would say that it's creamy in the sensation on the palate. Um, it is definitely warming. There's That 10.3% ABV is not very well hidden. Um, it's full-bodied, lively carbonated, um, the finish is medium to long. I would say it's a very intensely strong finish. The balance is fairly uh, sweet as opposed to uh, bitter. Not very well balanced. It's definitely cloying. I have to applaud uh, Boston Beer Company for trying something uh, like this with um, so much safety in, in their core business. Uh, and I say safety in terms of, of money, you know, especially in this economy. You, you can't be too experimental, um, even though beer does allow it, allow it to happen. So, uh, generally speaking, I'd say congratulations to Sam Adams for trying something. 